Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is 9231 Further Probability and Statistics, Topic 4, Nonparametric Tests. Our topic is Single Sample Wilcoxon Sign Rank Test Normal Approximation. This is a Part 2 to the Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. When we can use the normal approximation is when our sample size is greater than 10. Following from here, we will want step 5, the expectation of t and variance of t. We'll see how to calculate those values. 6, calculate z. 7, look up a probability. And step 8, we compare if the probability of t, which comes from step 7, is greater than the probability of the critical value. Now this is no lookup for a critical value in our algorithm. We'll find the appropriate probability given in the problem. We do not reject the null hypothesis, etc. If the inequality switches, then we do reject the null hypothesis. And we'll work through an example. Our requirement is test at 5% significance level whether median differs from 150. Differs from indicates not equal to and not equal to indicates two-tail, which means that we're going to look at the 5% significance and cut that in half to get to 0 0.025, which we'll use towards the end of our procedure. I'll bring over my data. I'll do this on the next slide because we have a relatively large data set here, 19 measurements. And now I'm going to calculate the magnitude of each of these, the distance from the proposed median. Now I want to identify the sign, whether the measurement is less than or greater than the proposed median. And since my data is ascending from small to large, I can see that there's a break at the measurement of 148. Everything above that is a negative. And then everything below, starting from the measurement of 151, is a positive. Now I want to rank, and I want separate columns for positive and negative. I'll talk through my first five and then post the remaining rankings in the appropriate columns. Looking for the smallest magnitude, I see that's one, and that is relating to the measurement of 151. The sign is positive, so my rank number one, the smallest magnitude, goes into the positive column. Scanning, I see my next magnitude getting larger is 2, right above. That's tied to the measurement of 148. 148 has a sign negative, so I'm going to put the ranking number 2 in the negative column. Next is 18. That's right above the 148, so measurement 132 has a magnitude of 18. That's my third rank. That's assigned to a sign negative, so I'll put number 3 for the third ranking in the negative column. And I'll mark these to show that I'm working through and then looking at fewer items as I evaluate what's left. Next is 21. That's the ranking number four. That's also negative. So I'll put a four in that row in the negative column. 
and scanning I see next is 23. That's the fifth ranked item. That's associated with a positive sign. So in the positive column in that row, I'll give the ranking number 5. And I'll go through this process for all 19 measurements. So this is my complete ranking, 1 through 19. Now I'm going to sum the two columns, the positive and the negative column. And my totals are 86 and 104. So let's go back and see where we are in our algorithm. We've completed steps 1. Actually, we haven't done step 1. Let's do step 1 now. So I need to identify the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis is median is 150. Alternative hypothesis, median differs from 150. So now we've completed step one. On the next slide, I've done my rank and my sum. Four, T, and then five, the expectation and variance. T is going to be the minimum value of the column sums. So T is the smaller of 86 or 104, 86. Now for the normal approximation, we need to come up with an expectation. That formula is a ratio of n times n plus 1 quantity over 4. And variance is a ratio n times n plus 1 quantity times 2n plus 1 quantity over 24. And for n in this example equals 19, the two values we get are 95 for expectation, 617.5 for variance. Let's take a look at the algorithm. We're on to step six. We're going to calculate a z. Let me put an important note here. How about in red with cc, continuity correction. When we go from a binomial to a normal, we're going from discrete to continuous, so we want a continuity correction. Using that z, we'll look up probability in the normal distribution table. Before we do the z, let's think about so we make the appropriate correction. Let's think about the concept that we're evaluating. We're evaluating the probability that x, the number we're working with, our test statistic is 86. Let me make that a large x. We want to evaluate whether x is less than or equal to 86. Using the concept of a single sample sign test, I want to include the 86 in my probability. So in the adjustment that we're going to make, we want to work with 86.5. We want to consider any measurement from a continuous perspective all the way up to 86.5 because those measurements would all round to the integer 86. So let's calculate a z-score using, as our measurement, I'll break this into the 86 that we're working with, plus 0.5, the continuity correction. We see we want to add that to include measurements that would round to 86. We'll subtract the mean of 95 and divide by the square root of the variance, which is 617.5. Our value, negative 0 0.342. Since I have a negative z to use the normal distribution table, what I need to do is work with a positive z. So the probability is going to be 1 minus 
the probability that I find based on a z value of positive 0 0.342. So with the lookup and adjusting by 1 minus, my probability is 0 0.3662. In that last line, I left the probability blank. This is the probability that x is less than or equal to 86.5. Refer to this probability as the probability of t, my test statistic. Now I want to compare to the probability of the critical value. Let's go back looking up on the right near the top. I made a calculation of 0.025 based on the requirement of 5% significance level and two tail. That is a probability. So the probability of the critical value is 0.025. I might be given a critical value and I go to the normal distribution table to find what that probability is, but here I know what the probability is. And what I want to do is compare the probability of t to the probability of the critical value. In making that comparison, I showed that 0 0.3662 is greater than 0 0.025. Therefore, do not reject the null hypothesis. And my explanation is what I wrote as my null hypothesis. Median is 150. This completes the requirements of the problem, but I want to show how to think about this analysis visually using a normal distribution curve. So I'll draw in a curve and I'll mark off my critical value of 0 0.025 in blue and indicate that what I'm evaluating is whether my test statistic probability is out there in the far left tail. If it is, the probability is so low that I decide to reject. But if it's anywhere to the right of the critical value, then I don't consider the probability to be too low. So if I go in in green and mark my probability of the test statistic 0 0.3662, that might be here on the curve. And notice that that doesn't fall into the critical region. Therefore, I don't reject the null hypothesis. Another way of thinking of this is that the probability of the test statistic is greater than the probability of the critical value. Therefore, we're okay with the probability. As long as it's not too small, as long as it's not below 0 0.025, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And this completes the lesson on single sample Wilcoxon signed rank test normal approximation.